If you want to be cast in a movie or a television show, it's really important to understand exactly how the casting process works because the audition is not the only step in the process. As actors, we really only know about the audition because it's the only step that we are directly involved in, right? But there are steps before and after the audition that are just as significant. And if you don't understand how those steps affect you, you could be sabotaging your own chances of getting booked. So today, let's talk about exactly how the entire casting process works. What's up, my fellow actors? Welcome to the Acting Career Center, here to help you learn the skills you need to break into the film and television industry. My name is Kurt Yu. Thank you so much for spending some time here with me today. If this is your first time here, make sure to subscribe to this channel to get more videos on acting, auditioning, and career advice every single week. Now, before we get into today's topic, I want to talk to you a little bit about my t-shirt. If you don't recognize this logo, this is Cobra Kai. The reason I'm wearing this t-shirt today is because you can watch season one and season two of the show Cobra Kai on Netflix right now. That's right. You can watch the first two seasons of Cobra Kai on Netflix starting today. And you can catch my character, George, in a couple episodes in season one. I would recommend everybody watch it whether I was in the show or not. It is an incredible show. You don't even have to take my word for it. I actually just saw an article today that said Cobra Kai is the best show you will watch on Netflix in 2020. So go check out Cobra Kai if you get a chance and if you happen to see me on the show, let me know down in the comments and give me a shout out. I'd really appreciate it. All right, enough about Cobra Kai. Let's talk about today's topic, which is how the casting process works. I'm going to give you a kind of a high level overview of the casting process. There are specific details that are different from case to case, from project to project. So I'm not going to go into the weeds of all that, but I will give you kind of a bird's eye view of how in general the casting process works for a movie or a television show. I'll break down the 13 steps that it takes to cast a role in a movie or a show and how your audition kind of fits into those steps. Okay, so let's start with an example. Let's say there's a new movie that's going to be made. Uh, let say a Disney movie. Once that movie is done being written, once the writers have finished writing the script, they now need to cast the movie, right? So the producers now need to hire a casting director. This is step one. The producers of the movie hire a casting director to help them cast the movie. The casting director then takes that script and they will go through it and find every single role that needs to be cast and create breakdowns for those roles. A breakdown is just the short description of each role inside the script. And then step two is that the casting director will then send those breakdowns out to agents. Sometimes those breakdowns will be sent publicly, posted publicly as well on sites like Actors Access so that uh, individual actors can access those. But most of the time for big budget movies and television shows, they go directly to agents and will not be posted publicly. I would say 95% of the time or more, breakdowns only go to agents and will not be posted publicly so that actors cannot access them directly. That's why it is so important that an actor get an agent at some point in their career. All right, now that the agent has the breakdowns, they will then take those breakdowns and compare it to their roster of all the actors they represent and see who fits each role. So for simplicity's sake in our example, let's only focus on one particular role because a full movie script can have 50 or more roles that need to be cast from the lead all the way down to all the supporting roles. But let's just focus on one role for simplicity. Uh, let's say there's a role for a, uh, a person that works at a coffee shop and uh, the description is ages 16 to 25, male or female. So that's the character breakdown. So if I'm an agent, I get that character breakdown. I then look at my roster of all the actors I represent and I say, hey, here are all the people that fit that breakdown, okay? And once I find that group of people, all of those actors that fit the breakdown, I then send the headshot, resume, and demo reel of all of those actors back to the casting director and say, hey, casting director, 
Here are all of the actors that I represent that fit this character. Okay, so we're not involving the actors yet. This is only communication between the casting director and the agent so far. So that was step three. The agent now sending all of the actors they represent back to the casting director for a particular role. Now that the casting director has received all of those headshots, resumes, and demo reels, they now look at all of these actors and decide which ones they would like to see audition. Now, in an ideal world, every single actor would get a chance to audition. But unfortunately, in the real world, there just isn't that much time available. That's the main problem. The casting director does not have enough time to audition every single actor that wants to audition. Because think about it. We're only talking about one agent here. Typically, a casting director will reach out to dozens of agents. So if dozens of agents all send all of their actors that fit this particular coffee shop worker role, the casting director could potentially get a submission of hundreds or even thousands of actor headshots. There's no way that the casting director can audition hundreds or thousands of people for that one role. Because remember, there are 50 other roles that need to be cast for this movie, right? So for this particular role, they might only be able to see 20 or 30 actors. That means for each agency that submitted, they might only be able to audition one actor or two actors per each agency. This is why it is so important to have a great headshot. Because in this step of the process, how are you going to stand out to a casting director? The casting director is looking at a sea of hundreds of headshots and they have to decide and pick 20 or 30 out of all of those of those people that they want to see audition. So you have to have a headshot that really catches their eye and really stands out for them to decide, oh, I want to see this person audition. So that is step four. Step four is the casting director selecting which actors they would like to see audition and then telling that to the agent saying, hey, agent. Thank you for sending me all of these actors that fit this role. Here are the two actors I would like to see audition, please. Moving on to step five. Step five is now the agent now passing that information along to the actor. Now, finally, the actor comes into play. The agent will then tell the actor, hey, you got an audition and here are the sides. Step six is then the actor preparing for the audition. And this is the part that we are all familiar with as actors. Now we finally have the audition sides. We have the role that we need to audition for. And now we have time to get ready for the audition. In my experience, typically you have between 24 and 48 hours to prepare for an audition. Occasionally, I will have more than 48 hours, maybe uh, an extra day, but very, very rarely will I have more than four days to prepare for an audition. I would say on average, it's about 48 hours. Now you might be asking, how can you prepare a really, really great audition in less than 48 hours? Well, I'm glad you asked. I've actually created a free 10-step audition preparation cheat sheet that will help you nail your audition every single time. So if you want to download that free cheat sheet, you can get it by going to that link right up there. Now that you've prepared your audition, step seven is actually doing the audition. The audition can be live and in person, or what's a little bit more common these days is doing a self-tape, which is recording your audition at home and then sending it electronically to the casting director. Step eight is the casting director reviewing every single audition from each of the actors. If they were in-person auditions, they would have all been recorded in the room. So the casting director will watch all of those auditions back again. Or if they were self-tapes, the casting director will just watch all of those tapes. At this point, there could or could not be callbacks depending on the project and depending on the role. A callback is when a casting director then brings back some of the actors that they really liked for that particular role to give them a second round of auditions. If an actor gets a callback, that means they are really interested in them for the role. They br they've been brought back. Not everybody gets brought back for a callback. They usually only bring back the people that they are really interested in. Now, some auditions don't have callbacks. Sometimes they will just book the actor 
off of the initial auditions. Some will have one round of callbacks, some others will have even more than one round. Some will have producer sessions and network tests and all kinds of stuff. So that's why I say step nine here is that there might be callbacks, there might not be, but just understand what they are in this process. After the callbacks, the casting director will then make their recommendations for each role of the project to the producers. So that is step 10. The casting director recommending their top three or top five actors for each role to the producers for a final casting decision. Step 11, the final casting decision now needs to be made. It's important to understand that the casting director does not make the final casting decision. They may have influence, but they are not the final decision maker. For a television show, the final decision makers are the producers, the showrunner, and the network. For a movie, it's usually the producers and the director. But the important thing is that it is not the casting director. The casting director does have an important role in the beginning of the process because they select who they want to see audition. So in a way, they do decide who has a chance of booking the part. But when it comes to the very end, they don't make that final decision. So that was step 11. Step 12 is once that final decision is made, the casting director then extends an offer to the agent of that actor. And then step 13 is the final step. The agent then passes along that offer to the actor and says, hey, actor, you have just booked the role of coffee shop worker on this new Disney movie. All right, that was a peek behind the curtain of how this whole casting process works. I hope this clears things up a little bit if you had any confusion about how this process works. If you have any follow-up questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. That's it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, remember to subscribe. Until next time, keep practicing, keep learning, and I hope to see you on set one day. And go watch Cobra Kai on Netflix.